Hey, so today we're gonna we're gonna check out one of the original uh, powerlifting programs that most of us powerlifters of my generation and a little bit before uh, started out with, which is the starting strength style training program by Mark Rippleto, which is that sort of practical programming style, the three sets of five. Uh, you've got your light day, your heavy day, and your medium intensity day. Um, it's a great program for novice lifters. It really is. It, it has stood the test of time as well. And, you know, a lot of the the inspiration for this style of training that Mark and Glenn Pendley came up with actually originally came from uh, one of my true heroes of strength training, which is Doug Hepburn. Um, and uh, Mark was told about it through his coach, Bill Starr, another legend um, in the strength sports arena. So, um it stood the test of time. This is this concept of the do your fives, your three sets, five, five sets, five concept has been around for a long time. Um, but it was really Mark who brought it to the public's attention and to the mainstream and commercialized it. So um, big respect. A lot of people, uh, a lot of powerlifters hate on Mark and starting strength and criticize him. But uh, at the end of the day, under their bed, along with a couple of dirty porn mags and old tissues, they've got practical programming, starting strength manuals, books under their bed for sure. So we've all started with it. Most of us have started with it. And it's a great novelist program. For me, I ran it for probably the first program I ever did. So I, I ran it for about three to four months um, when I first started lifting. And then I plateaued and I moved on to Jim Wendler. And then I went on to other programs from there so it was the original program that i started with so let's check it out and not talk too much about this so i've got three um variations of the starting strength style training now this isn't the original starting strength style training this is a spreadsheet that i found that i like and i think it's very close to it but it isn't actually directly from starting strength um, this is a spreadsheet created by someone uh, based on it so uh, the first thing you must do is come to this table right here. Now, you must choose uh, the weight, the smallest weight increment. I would keep this at five, um, if, especially if you're doing this in pounds, it should be five. If you can do this in kilograms, you might want to change this to 2.5. Okay, and that will round it to the nearest 2.5 rather than five. Um, so the test weight, this is where you put the weight that you're lifting. Now here is the number of reps you lifted it for. Now I advise you to keep it at five, your five rep max. But it does say you can do anywhere from 1 to 12, but come on, who's going to do your 12 rep max? Okay, and this program is based around doing sets of five, so it makes sense to put your five rep max in here for all these lifts. That includes the main three lifts, but it also includes the press and the power clean. Now the press in this, uh, this term would refer really to your overhead strict press. Um, you could do the incline barbell press, you could do a decline barbell press, you can do a dumbbell bench press. Um, but really it refers to the strict overhead press. Now the power clean, that is debated, debated quite a lot amongst the powerlifting community. Is this actually something that you need for a powerlifting program? Now it is really more applicable to Olympic lifters. However, there's a lot of strength carryover from the power clean to your other main lifts. It helps with being more explosive. It creates strength, lower and upper body. So it is a good exercise, but the debate really lies around the fact that the power clean is not one of those exercises that you can learn in a week. It takes a long time to master, get the technique right, and you need to invest time into making sure that you perform the power cleans properly. I mean, I saw a video of Eddie Hall doing a power clean or something, and he was doing it wrong. And he's a, he held the deadlift world record of 500 kilograms and one world's strongest man. So it takes time to learn this. And if you're a power lifter, you're not bringing this lift to the platform like an Olympic lifter. So should you invest that much time and energy on a power clean when really you should be focusing on these three lifts? And these two should really just be nothing more than accessory exercises that have some strength carried over to the main lift. So if that was the case, what I did when I ran this program is I did do the power clean originally, but then I replaced it with the Pendley row which I felt was easier. I could learn that exercise. It took me a week to get the technique right, get it mastered. And it was very easy to program into starting strength. So that really comes down to the individual lifter and down to you. You can make that decision whether you want to do a power clean or you want to do a pendulet row. If you're going to do the row, you're going to have to write pendulet row in there and replace that. 
So based on this, it's calculated um, my estimated one rep max and the five rep max is obviously the same as this column because I'm doing my five reps. So we know that it's gonna be the same there. This is the pound increase. This is how much you increase the increment. You increase each training session when you perform that lift. So week one, let's say you session one for the squat, you did 100 pounds. Then session two, you would increase that to 105 pounds. Session three, 110. So this is the linear increment progression that you make each training session. Now I'd keep these at the same. If you can do this in pounds, keep it at pounds. If you can do it in kilograms, you want to change that to 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and five kilograms. These are good increments. Some people look at them and think, oh, I can do more than that. So they just whack this up to 20 pounds, whack these up to 10 pounds. But bearing in mind that this is, this program, this one particularly, there is 24 sessions. Okay, so this is quite a long program for a novice lifter. So you need to think about that in the long term, that you're gonna be increasing the weight each training session over the space of up to 24 sessions. So that's something to bear in mind when you do that. Uh, the reset, I'm not going to talk about this in this video. I've talked, I will talk about this in my blog. I'm not gonna go into detail about this, but generally most people can just leave this as it is. But the reset is basically uh, how much you want to backtrack from it. So as you can see here, the test work, we start week one, session one for all the lifts with our five rep max, our current five rep max. Sometimes that doesn't work with people. They actually wanna start with a little bit less than their, their five rep max. So you might want to change that slightly. So if, I'm, if I knew that that five rep max was definitely my max, and I cannot do three working sets five with that, that weight, because it really was just doable for one set five, I wanna reset that slightly. So I'm gonna put 10% in there, and as you can see, it's reduced it by 30 pounds because I've, I've reset it by 10%. But if you want to, probably the best way, probably anywhere from two to 5% is enough to reset for you to achieve those three sets of five. So that's basically what that means. I won't go into too much detail about that, but that's enough detail for you to understand the purpose of that. So there we go. So um, let's have a look at this. So uh, what we got here. So this one, uh, it alternates workout A, workout B. So you're not alternating in terms of week, you're alternating in terms of workouts. So workout A, you do, you got your warm-up sets here and you got your working sets. So let's talk a little bit about this. So your warm-up sets are these ones right here. Two sets of five, enough. It just says 45, that's because it's an empty barbell. This means that this is 45 pounds or 20 kilograms. That's the weight of the barbell. Two sets of five with that. One set of five of your current working set weight so it's 40 percent of 300 pounds and then you do 60 percent of 300 pounds and 80 percent of 300 pounds you can see that right here up here in the formula bar 0.8 it's 80 percent and then you do your working sets which are in red okay these ones right here and that's three sets of five now make sure you do these warm-up sets i've met people who said ah screw it i don't need to do it i'll just warm up with an empty bar and jump 300 that's a really bad idea and it's a bad habit to get into as a novice lifter so make sure you complete these warm-up sets. You don't, they're not that difficult. They're just, they won't take up that much time. Probably you need about one minute rest between each warm-up set. And then you get two or three sets of five working sets. So we can see uh, workout A, we do your squat, your bench, your deadlift, okay? And then workout B, we do your squat, your press, and your power clean. Um, now, every exercise for your working sets, you do three sets of five with exception to this power clean um, and the deadlift, well, so for the deadlift, you actually just do one working set, of one set of five. Now that's debated a lot as to whether that's enough volume. But I think the inspiration for this actually came from um, Mark doing the original Doug Hepburn bench routine that he used to do, where he'd do five sets of five for volume, and then he'd do five heavy single sets at max effort. But obviously when you apply that to all three lifts, including a power clean and the press, you'll burn out, that's too much volume, it's too much intensity, it doesn't work. So instead of doing those five heavy singles, he just did um, one set of five. So that, that's where that, that idea came from. And that really applies just for the deadlift because um, it's, a, it's a big lift and it does require a lot of energy um, and you can't overtrain the deadlift, you'll definitely injure yourself pretty quickly, um, especially your lower back. 
So that's it, and that's debated a lot whether that's enough for volume. I know people who have changed that to three sets of five, and actually just done three sets of five, um, and that was that, that worked for them. But you must remember that with the deadlift, you make bigger jumps each session. 100, you go up in 10 pounds, or 15 pounds for the latter programs, but in this one, you jump in 10 pounds. So that's something to bear in mind. And with the power clean, you actually do five sets of three. It's the same amount of volume, 15 reps, but instead of doing three sets of five, you do five sets of three. Because it's a power clean, you do less reps per set. So that's the, the main difference there. But all the other exercises, it's three sets of five, three sets of five, three sets of five, when you press, when you bench press and you squat. So that's this is kind of the analysis of it. These are the warm up. These are the percentages, as I already talked about. You can see each exercise has slightly different percentages based on the exercise. Um, so it's not all the same for one. And then you do for the working sets the five rep max plus the number, the 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 session, how much you increment and increase each session, and that's it. And and then you alternate between two. So if if you were to do this, workout A would be Monday, workout B would be Wednesday, workout A would be uh, maybe Friday, and then workout B could be Saturday. Um, but you, how you decide to do this um, is really up to you. But you have to complete these 24 sessions. I know some people have just done two sessions a week, and then for their third session they did some cardio, uh, ab work, and hypertrophy training. I know some people who've done it four times a week, so they A, B, A, B each week. I know some people who just did the workout A, workout B, workout A, and then took three days rest and did it again. You don't need to follow this based on a weekly scheduled basis. You can just, as long as you complete these 24 um, sessions, it doesn't matter if you do it in eight weeks or 10 weeks or four weeks or six weeks, whatever. Um, it's really down to you how you want to incorporate and schedule it. So that's that, that's the, the original novice program. This one's my favorite one, the one we're gonna cover now, the practical programming novice program. So I recommend if you were to do this in, in order, you do the original novice first, then the practical programming, then the advanced novice. So let's talk a little bit about this. So it's very similar, you've got uh, your warm up sets and your working sets, okay, so, but this slightly difference now, it gets a little bit more complicated. This all remains the same, the only difference being that you increment by 15 pounds or 7.5 kilograms um, for the deadlift, but the others are all still five pounds. And the reset percentage is based on what you want to do, whether that's 2.5%, 1%, 5%, whatever you think you need to reset by. So again, but the schedule is slightly different now. We actually do, we've got a week B, week A and a week B. Now week A, we on Monday we squat, we bench, and we do chin-ups, weighted chin-ups. Uh, Wednesday we squat, we overhead press and we deadlift and then Friday we squat, bench press and we do pull-ups and let me double check that, yeah, I'll go and then uh, week B, we squat, we bench and we chin up um, so we squat, we press and we chin up now the difference between this is the fact that week A we bench now we overhead press and week B on Monday uh, on Wednesday we squat, we bench press and we deadlift and now the difference being we've actually, we bench press instead of overhead press. So we've just all changed these two days, switched them around. And then Friday we squat, we press and we pull up. And the difference here being instead of bench press, we press. So we press twice a week in week B and we bench press twice a week in week A. Uh, we deadlift on Wednesday on both week A and week B. Um, and the chin ups and the pull ups remains the same. But you can alternate between weighted and body weight. Uh, pull-ups now remember the chin-ups and pull-ups in this program are actually three sets to failure so whether you do three reps or 10 reps or 20 reps or 30 reps it's up to you whether you want to do these body weight or weighted again it's really up to how much you can actually do um, some people can't actually do weighted chin-ups or weighted pull-ups so it would just be body weight but just make sure that you go to um, 50 uh, up you, you go to complete failure and as it rightly says, um, once you get up to 15 reps, then you add weight. So that's that's a good note there to take into consideration. Um, and again, same applies for the pull-ups. Now, um, <coughs> let's have a look at the, uh, sorry, let's go, let's go to here. Let's have a look at the program. So um, these are for the squat, the bench, the press, and the deadlift. This is your, your routine. So um, three sets of five, we go, it's the same as, 
the first program, the warm-up routine. You've got that empty bar, 45 pounds. Uh, for the squat, 40, 60, 80. The prints, the bench slightly less, slightly more, 50, 70, 90. And the press, slightly more than the bench press, 55 for the first, uh, the first real weighted working set, 70 and 85, slightly less on the top set. And then the deadlift, 40, 60 and 85%, so a little bit higher for that one set of two than the squat. And then the working set, you basically week one, do your five rep max minus any reset. And then each training session, you increment by this pound increase. It's quite simple, really. It really is actually incredibly simple. So that's the program. That's that's as simple as that. Now you'll see that the um, for the press here on um, uh, week B. Let's have a look. So yeah, for for the second session for uh, week B, you can see that we do five sets of three, um, and so when we do week A pressing, we do five sets of three, um, and let's have a look. We do five sets of three for there. So when we do the bench pressing, the pressing, the overhead press. Apologies. We do five sets of three. But for everything else, for the squat and the bench press, we do three sets of five. The overhead press or incline press or decline press, whatever one you want to choose, you do five sets of three. And then for the deadlift, the same as the original program, you only do one working set or five reps. And then each session you increase by up to 15 pounds. But I know some people who chose to keep it at 10 pounds because that worked for them. They felt 15 pounds was too big of a jump um, each session. So that's that, that's the program, quite simple as that. Um, and now we go to the advanced program. Now this is actually relatively similar, pretty damn similar to the, um, the, the practical programming. So this all remains the exact same uh, as the practical programming. Still the same increases, uh, session increases as practical programming. You choose your reset based on what works for you. You work off your five rep max and you enter your current max in there and you change the increment based on whether you're doing this on pounds or kilograms. And remember, if you can do this in kilograms, you should change this because you don't want to do 15 kilogram jumps for your deadlift. You want to make that 17.5 or five. So uh, again, the same thing, we go same, it's the same up warm up routine for the exercises that we've, that we've already covered, the same percentages that we use, the same rep scheme that we use. That's all the same. The difference here is that now we actually alternate First the difference is that we actually alternate our chin-ups and our pull-ups from unweighted to weighted each training week. So week A, we do weighted chin-ups. Week B, we do unweighted. Week A, the third week, we do weighted. So you can see the pattern there, and that applies for the same below. Now, weight added, so failure occurs at five to seven reps. So make sure that you choose a weight that you fail in between five to seven reps when you do it weighted. Okay, that's a very interesting note. Make sure that you pay attention to that. And the same applies for the pull-ups, anywhere from five to seven reps. So that's something to bear in mind when you do that. So we can see, let's look at my table that I created. Week A, we squat, we bench, and we do weighted chin-ups. Three sets to failure, anywhere from five to seven reps. Week uh, Wednesday, we do we front squat. Now, this is where it changes slightly. Instead of doing three back squat sessions a week, we alternate. Now, we change that to back squat Monday, front squat Wednesday, back squat Friday. So, we throw in the front squat. And now, the front squat has a slightly different warm-up percentages than it does to the, um, the back squat. So, that's the difference there. But it's still three sets of five for your working set. Um, and then you over, then you press and you deadlift. The deadlift is still uh, one set of five on week A, and the pressing is done at three, five sets of three on week A. And then we squat on Friday, we bench press, and then we do unweighted pull-ups, three sets to failure. Um, so unweighted means you really can go for max reps. Again, you've got to do it to failure, so just go until you can't do any more pull-ups. Make sure you got your technique right with the pull-ups and don't injure yourself. Don't be an idiot uh, and pull a muscle or strain something. Uh, just do as much as you can within your limits. Uh, it's an accessory exercise. It's not something you're going to do when you go to a meet or, or an event. Um, and then week B, we squat and we press and we do unweighted chin-ups this week instead of weighted. So the difference here between week A, Monday, and week B is we don't bench press. We press for five sets of three. 
And then Wednesday, the difference being that we don't deadlift, we power clean for five sets of three instead of deadlift for one set of five, and uh, we bench press for three sets of five instead of five sets of three. And the difference between both week, week A and week B on Friday and week B, we squat, we press, and we do weighted pull-ups this time. So not unweighted like in week A, we do weighted. Um, the difference being that we bench, we press, we overhead press instead of bench press. So those are the, the main differences between the practical programming and the advanced one. So uh, pretty straightforward there. So my advice would be to keep to the program. Now we do a total, you do a total of 35 training sessions and you really want to do keep to this kind of schedule of the traditional starting strength Monday, Wednesday, Friday, take Saturday, Sunday off to rest before you reset and go for week B and next week where you do Monday, Wednesday and Friday again. So you kind of want to do that one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off, and then you take two days off before you begin the new week. That gives you enough time to recover so you're ready to begin and start all over again. Alternatively, you can do a Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and then take Sunday and Monday off and go again next week. Um, up to you. But that's it, really. That's the program. It's really that simple. Um, there's not much to it. Uh, and as you can see, you start... Uh, session one week one for all the lists with your current five rep max and then obviously you can reset it based on what what you feel you need to reset it by and then each session that you do that so we can see we squat uh, week a session one week one we do a hundred pounds for three sets of five and then the next time we squat we actually do on friday 105 so we've incremented we've increased by five pounds for three sets of five so that's that sort of linear progression that most novices can do with no problem so that's the program easy as that so i hope you enjoy it if you I hope you have some good success with these programs have any questions you can comment below in addition you can content comment on my website contact me through my website or my instagram so uh, have a great day good luck with the program and keep lifting